Hey everyone, King Cow here. Figure today we're gonna do an Ash and Athena guide because I haven't done that on this channel. Uh, spoiler alert: this is going to kind of just show off some stuff that you have to be a pirate legend to do. But here we go. So first off, we've got to get the quest. And to get the quest, in the Athena's Fortune area. And anybody who's a pirate legend can go and do this in any tavern. So you go up to the pirate lord, done well to make it he here. browses voyages, and you've got the Ash and Athena. You want to pick this up? Yes. Alright. So now we've got the Ash and Athena. This takes place in the Roar. I'll show it to you on the map when I get out there. Um, and so, say you're not a pirate legend but you want this, but your friend's a pirate legend, well, get him in and have him set the quest down on your table. Once it's started, he could leave if he needed to, and you could invite another friend in. You know, it's just that initial thing needs to be done by a pirate legend. But anybody can turn it in. So, start it, and go over here, propose quest, voyages, bam. We've started the Ash and Athena. You check your quests, which I always forget it's this one. You'll have like all these, like, it's gonna be eight quests total. This is chapter one, technically. And so it'll be a mixture of berry quests, um, more berry quests. And riddles and skeletons. This quest total probably gonna take if you're super fast can probably be like 30 minutes. If you're chill, it's gonna take two hours ish, depending on the volcanoes, because there's a lot of volcanoes in the roar. And just so you can see, the roar is this area out here. So there's a whole bunch of volcanoes and all that kind of stuff. So let's talk about some strats here on what uh, how, you've got the quest, you started the quest, what should you do next? First off, get supplies, especially now with the little fortresses. These things have a bajillion supplies. Get a, a storage crate, head over to one of those, clear it, and then do a round of picking up all the supplies from there and you'll be set. I'll get you enough food, enough cannonballs, enough wood, cause you're gonna be getting hit by volcanoes. You know, so you wanna make sure that you're in it for the long, long fight. If you go in with base supplies, you can get it done, obviously, but it's just a lot easier with supplies. You can also pick up some Disney sticks. Those are the siren sticks. You can get them from the floating barrels sometimes. You can get them from sunken ships and also PVE and just randomly on islands. Uh, the reason I bring that up is because they destroy PvE content. So they've got an area of effect so they can take out groups of skeletons. It's super good. Let's not forget about cannons. If you can't find Disney stick, cannons are your, your next best friend. You know, line those guys up on the water, shoot them. They're good to go, gone. It'll speed up killing all that PvE. And especially now, there's a lot of PvE in the game. It's not just skeletons you're worried about. You're also, you know, you're also contending with all the crazy crab things and the sea life that pops up along with the sirens if you're in the water too long. Just know that skeletons have more hit points on Athena quests. So it will take a little longer for them to die. And then the last part of getting supplied is finding a rowboat. Doesn't matter what kind of rowboat. 
any rowboat will do. Rowboats in general are just a good thing to have, be it for escaping or if your boat sinks, you can get all your loot onto it, that type of thing. Next part is emissaries. There's obviously all the companies have little emissaries. You can vote on the emissary table to start an emissary. That gives you more money for when you do the turn in. So, you know, you have your merchant emissary, gold hoarders, souls, reapers. Whoa, there's two reapers on this on this server. Anyway, I'm here making a video, not playing. And then the most obvious one where you're like, well, I'm doing an Athena, so why shouldn't I just fly the Athena emissary? Well, there's two schools of thought. It's like, do you want to be sneaky about it? Or do you want the attention? Second, so you put down your emissary and raise it. It's now on the board. Anybody in the world, in your in your Sea of Thieves world there, can see that somebody's doing an emissary. Is it good or bad? If you want to fight, well, then it's good, because those people are going to hunt you down. If you didn't want to fight, well, you just put a target on yourself, because there's only certain there, there are main islands and areas where Athenas happen. People are really good at hunting people down when they when they're doing an Athena. So I try not to give them a heads up that I'm doing it. But again, the extra money is nice. So if you've got like a capable crew, definitely go Athena and expect people to come after you. Definitely expect Tux. But if you want to be sneaky about it, I'd probably do a uh, mm, Gold Hoarder or a Emissary of Souls. Because you're going to get at least 8, if not, you, you know, you're probably going to get 10 plus goals from this quest. You know, but you also get um, a bunch of chests too. So either one of those is going to be fine and you're going to make a little extra money. And you normally don't cause too much attention. Like, people don't come hunting those all the time. Though, Reaper 5s will see you on the map. And if they see you in the in the roar, they're going to assume Ash and Athena. Anytime anyone is in the roar, somebody is probably doing an Ash and Athena. So, the sneakiest of all sneaky ways, don't put on any emissary at all. Alright, covered emissaries... Let's talk about the roar in general. Uh, things to look out for. Number one thing is going to be volcanoes. There are just a bajillion volcanoes in this place, and they they go off all the time. They do massive damage to your boat. Basically, what you want to do is just avoid the, the volcanoes at all costs. If you have a quest on an island that has a current volcano, either go on to the next quest or wait it out. Um, they take normally about five to ten minutes to go away, but once they go away, you're pretty you're pretty much good to finish that quest before another one happens. But it is random, and they can happen at any time. Uh, they, it does give you a warning before they start happening, and when that happens, the ground shakes and all kind of stuff, and you should probably get the heck out of dodge. There's also going to be steam, little steam vents that that sometimes pop out of nowhere, and they can get super aggressive and very quick spawning. So make sure you have a lot of food on you so that basically they knock you into the air and when you fall and hit the ground, you take damage. And if you keep doing that over and over and over without a break, well, you're dead. And then also remember that those steam pockets do damage to PVE as well. So sometimes you can use that to your advantage. Last thing to look out for is spicy water. George likes his chicken spicy. That's when there's a volcano on an island, the water around that island is boiling. And that'll do damage to you. This will do damage if it leaks into your boat and like you go downstairs or try to get the water out. It'll actually do damage to you there as well. So just be aware, you know, watch your health. That's why I said get supplies first, because you do go through a lot of supplies. But now you know the hazards. Now go in and... Do your quests. Once you finish your eight quests, you'll get one more quest after that. And that is your Athena dig. That's where your Athena will, will be. But now you've gotten your Athena, what do you do, right? So we kind of skip ahead here to the end of it because really throughout the whole thing, it's just PVE, right? So uh, use Google for the riddles. That'll help you get through them. Though they're pretty simple for the most part, but some of the islands I had no idea what I was doing. So I just Googled it. 
So you've got your Athena. Now there's a couple things that you got to figure out. It's like, first off, do you go to the nearest outpost, you know, Moro's Peak? Am I, am I going to go straight to Moro's Peak with this and just sell it right away? It really does depend on a few factors. One, has it been a contentious server? Have there been uh, attempts to tuck on you? Have you been attacked? Have you seen other ships in the area? If the answer is yes on one of those things, maybe Moro's Peak isn't the best option. Because likelihood of somebody being there tucked is pretty high. So you, there's, there's the option of Ancient Spire and Plunder Outpost. I'll use those ones as my main. Hey, look at that. We got our, uh, our Reaper out there. If Moros is, you know, suspect and you're like, I don't really want to do it, you know, Ancient Spire is a good option. However, some advanced crews are going to know that. So what they end up doing is they tuck at Moros and they leave their ship close to Ancient Spire. So like... Crow's Nest Fortress, maybe even the other side of Ancient Spire. They're tucking on Moro's Peak. You're like, I'm going to go to Ancient Spire, but these tuckers are smart. They they will then go back here, and they'll sink you before you get to Ancient Spire. So sometimes it's best to think outside of the box a little bit. You know, head up to, like, a place up here, like Fetcher's Rest or something like that, and then try and kind of fool them, right? Because they're thinking, oh, you must have already gotten the dig. But they don't know that. They don't know that until you jump off the boat with the Athena. So if you go to another island, they are not going to think that you're running away. And you could just go from Fletcher's straight to Galleons. Bam. You know, so... It, and if... Depending on where they hid their ship, they're probably not going to catch you from there. There's also the rowboat play. You use your main ship as a decoy. People will see your ship going around, going from island to island, but you've already gotten the Athena and you're rowing it up to Ancient Spire. They have no idea that's happening. You know, they're just paying attention to your ship. The one downfall of that is that person is on their own. Whoever's in that rowboat, you know, they are the masters of the destiny of that Athena. If he gets killed, if he makes a bad decision and doesn't notice that there's a, a mermaid at Ancient Spire or that there's another ship there or something and doesn't course correct down to plunder then you know you're going to lose your athena and you won't really get to fight for it so that's kind of the sad part about that part so really it's like do you want to fight for it you know then go to moro's peak because most of the time there'll be a tucker there somebody wanting your your athena you can check for uh, mermaids when you get to uh, Moros, shoot shoot out of your cannon, look around in the air for for mermaids. That's a telltale sign that there's tuckers, right? If there's tuckers there, you probably shouldn't try because unless you're really good at fighting, they're gonna they have the element of surprise and they they control the terms of when the st the fight starts, right? There's also the ultra sweaty way is to row to either plunders outposts or to um galleon's grave plunder outposts skipping ancient spire and skipping moros peak normally the way i play this one would be to use the ship as a diversion um, i'd probably go to flintlock or Fle uh, fetcher's rest i would send the boat towards um ancient spire I would then row to Galleon's Grave. They're not going to catch you doing that. There is also another way to do it is where you would get your boat purposefully sunk on a volcano. Because then they think that, you know, you're not scuttling or something. The scuttle trick isn't going to work. You're going to respawn in this area. But if you die to the lava, they'll just think you're incompetent and that kind of stuff. And while your ship, you know, is respawning down here or whatever, you're off turning it in at Galleon's Grave. It really does depend on how much conflict do you want to have, you know, and do you really want to turn in your Athena for yourself, or do you want to give it to another crew? So that's kind of the guide. Definitely wish you guys good luck out there on the seas, and definitely keep an eye out for tuckers. You know, I have a video on tucking on every ship. Take a look at them. I need to take a look at them and make sure they're all up to date, because it's been a while since I, t I posted, but 
they're definitely relevant. You know, I have an anti-tucking video. A couple ways of finding tuckers, you know? Because the worst thing is to put two, two hours into something and then, you know, don't get the prize at the end. Anyways, guys, that's it. Have a great one. And hopefully this actually does, does some good. You guys have a good one. Bye.